volunteering time and services for charities makes you feel good. On a typical day, you are likely to find Rotarians throughout the world volunteering their time to support programs of educational and humanitarian activities. These activities might include support of a youth exchange program dedicated to the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace. Or, find a Rotary Club providing funding that could be used to purchase a mobile van for a local children's daycare center, allowing working mothers an opportunity for supervised daycare of their children. Other Rotary Club volunteer activities provide senior shut-ins an opportunity to be guests at Christmas parties. Shut-ins from convalescent homes are shown attending a party that provided wheelchair assistance, dinner, and gifts. Still, other Rotarians help the poor in an underdeveloped country by providing a rebuilt ambulance and medical supplies. An international team effort helps to conquer polio through the Polio Plus campaign. Famous entertainers have provided their time in order to raise funds at Rotary Guest Concerts. These funds are donated in support of local boys and girls clubs with a view towards providing supervised games, physical activities, craft shops, and lessons in leadership. But how did Rotary begin? Where did it start? Why did it start? It started with a fellow named Paul Harris, a local businessman living in Chicago around the turn of the century. Let's turn back the calendar to 1905, visit Paul Harris, and find out how Rotary actually began. Jeannie, Jeannie. Oh, it's wonderful to get back here to you in our home at Comely Bank. Oh, this isn't Comely Bank. Now I remember. I was dreaming again of a world that would be filled with men and women who would dedicate their lives to service. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Well, I'm not here to tell you that I started Rotary just for myself or by myself. There were others involved. Back in Chicago in the early 1900s, there were a lot of lonely people looking for friendship, looking for work. Sunday afternoons, they might go down to the park and stroll over to the Chautauqua to hear William Jennings Bryan give a talk. Or they might go to the Trident Boat Club for a mug, men only. For 25 cents, they could ride the Princess all afternoon on Lake Michigan on Sunday afternoons. Or catch a streetcar up to the north side for a jar of that Aruka salve for pimples, or maybe a root beer. Their women, there wasn't much for them to do in those days, except take care of children. Oh, sometimes they'd slip away from a picnic maybe and go off to Madame Lador's salon for a jar of Madame Sloan's bust cream or <laughs> heaven forbid some of Mrs. Warden's female pills. Well, like I said, there were others involved when I started Rotary. I'll always remember that night at Madame Galley's when Sylvester Sheila and I had a good spaghetti dinner. And then we went over to the Union Building and met Gus Lore and Hiram Shorey. Gus Lore. He was a scientist, precise mind, making sure it would work. He was helping the miners. Tough life. Sylvester Sheila, we called him Silly. Silly hauled coal in Chicago, even in the summertime. Big stuff. Silly was the first Rotary Club president. He just couldn't say no. And that's become a tradition with Rotarians, you know. Now, Hiram Shorey was a tailor. He needed to be in Rotary. He needed to sell suits. He made fine suits that felt like silk, only there were just some cotton threads woven into the wool. Well, like I say, these were just ordinary men. They weren't William Jennings Bryans or Henry Ward Beechers or Teddy Roosevelt. They were plain men just like me, looking for friends, looking for work in Chicago in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. You know, 
As different ones joined Rotary over the years, they brought ideas about what we ought to be doing in our clubs. I remember old Mr. Number Five, Harry Ruggles. He was a printer. Harry thought we all ought to sing at the Rotary Club meetings. His favorite song was, You Scratch My Back and I'll Scratch Yours. You Scratch My Back and I'll Scratch Yours. Brother, scratch that itch. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Soon we'll both be rich. <laughs> we all like that song. Well, you know, as time went along, different men around the city wanted to join us. And we would invite them to our club meetings as we took our sack lunches and rotated around to various members' offices. And then they liked what we were doing so much they wanted to join Rotary. Well, we decided we couldn't let everyone join because there wouldn't be an equal number of men from some businesses and maybe too many, too many from another. That was when we decided one dentist, one banker, and one lawyer. And one of our members wisely suggested that he would rather have competency as competition. Now, we liked that idea because we wanted a club that we could be proud of. And Jeannie, I think you know that I would have been in favor of women in Rotary when the time was right for it. After all, I voted for suffrage in college back in Iowa, not just so women could vote, but so they could count. If there's ever anything you'll learn about Rotarians, it's that with them, every one counts. And one more thing, Jeannie, without you, I could have never made Rotary the great organization that it became. When we traveled on behalf of Rotary and other parts of the world, you were the essence of dignity. And when we entertained friends here at Cumley Bank, you were service above self. It was because of your caring and your love that I was able to make Rotary the great organization it became. Of course, I must remember that Chez Perry, who came into Rotary as secretary, was the one who saw to it that Rotary became a world organization. It was because of his dedication and work that Rotary gained what it did in the world, and he was given credit for what he did. Well, as I said, as time went along and men joined Rotary, different ones brought different ideas about what we ought to be doing in our club. And because we were so successful with this idea of you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, some of the members of our club decided that we should give something back to our community. And so it was. The first community service project was developed some of the merchants of Chicago weren't too happy about it. It meant that the people of Chicago wouldn't have to be going in and out of their places of business. But Rotary prevailed, and the first community service project was public toilets for the people of Chicago. Well, in 1917, Arch Klumpf was the international president of Rotary. He had an idea that I didn't fully understand. He thought Rotary should have a foundation dedicated to charitable and educational purposes. Well, he took the idea to the board. They liked the idea. They approved it. And in 1918, the first contribution was made to the Rotary Foundation, $26.50, money that was left over from the International Convention in Kansas City. Well, Rotary Foundation didn't do too well for many years after that. Remember, 1918, a great war. After that, a great depression. And again, a great war. You know, it's probably a good thing I died when I did. Because when I died, Friends from around the world sent over $2 million to the foundation in my name. 
And it was that year, 1947, that 18 scholars were sent to all parts of the world to study to help bring about peace in the world. Do you realize that in the last 10 years, 84% of the contributions have been made to the foundation? You know, it doesn't seem like I died. Oh, I know you have television so you can see what's going on anywhere in the world. You've put men on the moon. So I don't have to explain the technology that makes it possible for me to talk with you across the space and distance that usually separates us from one another. But I would like to take you back beyond the space and distance that separates you from the past and tell you a little bit about my road to Rotary. <laughs>